So now let's talk about recording in Arrangement View. First, find the track that you want to record. Click the Arm Arrangement Recording. In this case, I want to record the operator. Let's also turn on the metronome and set in a one bar count in. And then when you're ready to record, click the Arrangement Record button. So now we have our recording, but let's say I want to change what I did at the end. It just doesn't sound right. Or maybe what I did at the end is in the middle. Let's drag this somewhere in the middle. Let's say we don't like that and we want to record. Let me consolidate this. So this is how I recorded it. I don't like this part in the middle. So what we can do is set up the punch record in and out. So I'm going to move this loop start punch in point bar at the top over to the section that I want to replace. I'm going to select the punch in and punch out switch. And what this does is allow everything before this point to not be recorded. And the punch out switch allows everything after this point to not be recorded. So it's only ever going to record what's in here, what's in this section. And I want to make sure loop is turned off because I don't want to loop it. I'll play along at the beginning and then it'll only record that one section that I don't like and then stop recording after that section is ended. So let's give it a shot. It kind of skips there a little bit on my recording, but I'm sure those of you who have much better piano skills than I will have no problem with this feature. Also, you can disable the punch in and punch out individually. So let's turn off the punch out switch. So now what will happen is none of this will be recorded, but then from here on out will be recorded. So let's say I like the intro, but everything else has to go. So now I can follow along and start recording when it hits the punch in marker. Just remember that everything I'm showing you right now works the same way with both MIDI and audio files. Recording with MIDI overdub enabled allows you to record additional data without erasing previously recorded data. The button for that is right up top here, the little plus button. So what we're going to do is add this drum rack over to this MIDI track. Let me close this, click tab to go over to arrangement view. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to loop this section right here so that it, when it reaches the end, it'll start back at the beginning again. So now when I try to make some drum noises, I'm going to record. I have the metronome enabled with a one bar count in. So let's see how this works. <laughs> That's so bad, but you, you get the idea. Doing it on the fly like that isn't easy when you're trying to talk and think and record at the same time. But you get the idea that you can record over several layers and potentially continue adding sounds and layering them on top of each other. Something I should have done is quantized. If you go up to edit and select record quantization, you can select the quantization of the notes to make them lock better to the grid. To record automation in session or arrangement view, enable automation arm, then move a control while recording. 
automation arm is located right up here. It looks like these two circles. And then any automation is moving any control. So I'm going to move the global timing right here. And you can see the red line move right here as I move it. So let's have it at a low value to start off. And let's have this going a little bit. So I'm going to select it and use Command D to duplicate a few times. Oh, move over to the 9. So then now when I record, it'll capture my automation movements. Oh, I forgot I had this other stuff going. But it did work. You see the automation movements up and down. And you see the knob down here has a little red dot next to it indicating that it is being automated. And it moves automatically as you play. Personally, I like to automate manually instead of live. Usually I take out the pencil tool by clicking B. I'll do something like this to get the same effect. If you hold down Option, you can bend the curve a little bit. So it creates a more smoother transition. Instead of having to deal with all these little dots. If you want to delete some of the automation, you can't just select it and delete because it will delete the audio or the MIDI file. You have to add another lane which is what I did by clicking this little plus button here. And then now if I select anything, it'll delete just the automation. So now we have what looks like a straight line. You can single click any of these dots to have them disappear or to reappear. You can create more dots by just clicking on the blue line. Alternatively, you can select a section, mouse over it, you'll see it slightly turns blue right there instead of red, and you can drag up this whole section. Automation works the same way in Session View. Let's delete this by right-clicking on the parameter that I was automating, and then Delete Automation, and it'll delete all the automation for that. Let's bring it back down. I'm going to drag, well, let's take one of these clips, drag it over here. So now I can do the same thing and record this. Let's click the Session Record button, which is over here, versus the Arrangement record button. So now if I click on this, go down here to the clip view selector, click on the show hide envelopes box, and then I have to select the envelope that I was automating. It automatically goes to the last parameter that you clicked or automated. In this case, it was the global time. But you can select any of these parameters. But if this is too much for you, at the very bottom, only show adjusted envelopes. So now it'll only show the ones that I automated, which is only one. So only one shows up. And I can view the automation down here. I can hide this, hide this window to get a bigger view of the automation. And I can play around with it here. Unlike Arrangement View, if you delete here, it will not delete the MIDI information or audio files. As I said earlier, automation is shown by a little red square. You can see this one down here. If I move this parameter, the square turns gray, and the automation in the lanes also turn gray. Indicating that the automation has been disabled, it'll no longer work. You will only hear it at the 72 value instead of the changing value that I automated. To re-enable automation, if you go up to the top, this little arrow button pointing to the automation arm, this is the re-enable automation button. If you click this, it restores all the automation parameters back to where they were. You see this one jumped back down to 26. And these automation lanes once again turned red. And delete automation by right-clicking on a control. So I also did that, delete automation. Oops.
I also did that earlier, delete automation or click command delete.